we have discussed last time uh, reshow the circuit this is the equivalent circuit of a bipolar junction transistor which is a common emitter equivalent circuit shown this is the base resistance called base spreading resistance rbb dash this is the c pi is the capacitance associated with uh, value given last time uh, which is between base and emitter please remember there are two capacitances here though c pi is only shown there are two capacitance between base and emitter which are the two one is because of the junction capacitance of the base emitter junction and the other is diffusion capacitance right now it's showing c pi as if it takes care of both but otherwise we must find whichever is dominant the sum total is what is going to come in this parallel combinations then there is a resistance associated call qib by kt which is r pi then there is a junction between base and collector which has a capacitance of reverse bias capacitance of c mu which has shunted by a high huge resistance in the reverse bias of a diode which is r mu uh, there is a resistance called spreading resistance to emitter because of the path it takes longer distance to travel to the collector uh, from emitter to real emitter it's called res then there is a current source this is the major feature of bipolar transistor if you have a vbe at the input the output current is gm times vbe which is larger current than the input current which enters at the base and since this current will be larger there will be gain output current by input current then there is a output resistance r0 which is essentially the slope of ic vc characteristics we last time discussed then there is a small capacitor a uh, small resistance associated with the collector region itself which is rc and there is a capacitor between substrate and the collector which is called cps so this is the equivalent circuit last time we showed and we also derived it all the components of it quickly we'll get into some of the features or uh, some of the numbers so that you will get an idea what are the kind of numbers let's say i am working on uh, biasing okay so the word bias is very important i'll keep saying earlier also if you have the characteristics of a transistor maybe i'll redraw it if i have a resist capacitor uh, sorry collector current versus bce drawn at different vb or ib values this is ib 0 1 2 3 4 and what did we say this is a dc current versus dc voltage so what we say that if i fix my vce that is if i have a transistor this is all right now shown npn okay and i have a small resistance r here okay then the current flowing here is ic and this vce is essentially vcc minus ic rc r call it rl right now so one can see from here depending on the value of rl and depending on the choice of ic i make i can draw this line itself on this graph and this line this is vcc this is icc or max we'll discuss this in little more detail this is called load line this is called load line i think you have been you already known for a given bias current let's say ib2 this value vc dash what we'll use is called the and the current associated with this let's call it ic bias vc bias So if I fix my VC bias I have for a given IB, I get a fixed IC DC value of collector current. This is called biasing. Okay, we'll do a little more detail. I just want to use those values. So I am now say this is called the operating point. This is called the operating point, and we are all the time worried. Last time I said choice of my IC. is essentially going to decide all my parameters. If you recollect our formula, formula. You see everywhere IC term is appearing. Q IC by KT is our GM. So IC is therefore a major 
Bising prime capital IC means DC value. Okay. However, what is the uh, outputs we are looking? The small signal values, but the biasing is DC. Is that correct? Biasing is DC, which decides all small signal parameters for this circuit. So, having shown you this, we did last time something like this. So, let me quickly show you. Not really calculate anything. A typical I am biasing a uh, uh, such an amplifier circuit is shown is IC of 1 milliamp and I bias the reverse bias voltage to 3 volts, uh, VCS I use it 5 volt, I mean these are arbitrary values, do not get that these are the actual values, we will have to evaluate for given data given to us, okay. right now take some value. Typical value for junction capacitance Cj E0 for the junction emitter capacitance C pi as what we were looking is 10 puff and what is this 0 stand for? 0 bias with the bias change yes this value will also change okay. And what is this phi 0 E? This is the built in voltage of base emitter junction okay. This is 0 0.9 volts. What is the value of that? Kt by Q ln N M N D by N I square. We have done this physics last year. This is that any parameter which is you know because if it is a step junction it is half, it is exponential, it is one third and so on and so forth. So right now I assume it half. Similarly I calculate the junction capacitance of the base collector which is around 10 femtofarads. Similarly for base collector junction the uh, sorry base collector junction the built in voltage is 0.5 volt and eta C for the collector is 1 by 3. Now you can see why I use half here. Generally, base emitter junction can be made at a step junction, whereas base collector junction is normally because of the process we do can be generally exponential or linearly graded. But having given whatever, we can choose any of the values specified. So if it is a linear everywhere, we will put one third everywhere. If it is other, someone must specify what eta I should use for a given junction you are using. Okay, fine. Similarly, there is a between collector and substrate, the capacitance at 0 bias is 20 femtofarads, the built in voltage is 0.65 volt and corresponding eta is one third. Okay, so, these are the values associated with the capacitances. Then there are other values which will be specified for BJT which is called beta 0. This is essentially same as AC beta when when the input signal is much smaller than 26 millivolt then we can say beta AC is same as beta DC otherwise you two values will have to specify you are not working at close to much less than 26 millivolt. So for a large signal analysis do not use beta 0 and beta DC same but for a small signal analysis this number is good enough so that is equal to 100 then we say Typically base transit time is 10 picoseconds and early voltage can be 20 to 100 volts. This is just arbitrary number 20 volt. What does that 20 if it is less what is that it means? Which, which is the value which will become smaller? Anyone? If early voltage is smaller what does that mean? No. Output resistance will be smaller, output resistance will be smaller and that is what we are not looking into. We want output resistance ideally how much? Infinite. Current source shunted by infinite resistance. Now it may shunt it really by some number. So just, just to give value given an early voltage you are actually given something more than what we think. It is giving you R0 value immediately from the say slope. Okay. And therefore, VA by IC is the R0 of the transistors uh, given at the given bias. Then the other resistances given to us is RBB dash called base spreading resistance typically of 100 to 300 ohms. The RES which is typically 5 ohm collector, why collector resistance is higher than emitter? Device kya na Emitter is heavily doped N plus collector is lightly doped N, conductivity for N plus is much higher than collector region and therefore resistance wise is the opposite. Similarly, we have a value of R mu which is the junction capacitance which is 10 beta 0, R0 beta is much higher 100, 
R0 is in kilo ohms to mega ohms. Therefore, R mu will be order of mega ohms and above. So, it is almost open circuit across C mu. What is I am saying? I repeat, in most cases, this resistance may be neglected. Why? Typically, this value may be much higher than the short uh, at the given frequency, whatever C mu offers as the impedance. Let us say it offers 10 ohms. You are shunting 10 ohms by 1 mega ohm. So, how much is that can reduce 10 ohm? Maybe 9.998. So, how do I care whether it is a mega ohm sitting there or not sitting there? Is that clear? So, in most cases, R mu may not be useful as a tool. But if you would draw a circuit, if you are given a value, do find what is it and use it in circuit because for circuit it does not matter. If you have a parallel combination, you will make a parallel combination. Is that clear? But otherwise, in general, R mu's are not used because it is normally much higher than. 1 upon j omega c mu in most frequencies of operation. Is that clear? But when the omegas are much smaller and c mu are much smaller, yes, it may shunt the r mu as well and then you will have to find what is the equivalent value for this. Is that clear? So, this is something as a circuit we must appreciate while values which will go whenever we like to do things. Okay. We can uh, evaluate the other parameters. For example, I say c j e is normally taken as twice that of Cj0. Why this is called empirical calculations? You just double the value of Cj0 given to you. 10 puff, 10 femtofarad was given, make it 20 femtofarad. Is it okay? 20 femtofarad. The C mu at a given bias, uh, 3 volt bias, it is 10 upon 1 plus 3, 3 upon built in voltage 0.5 to the power 1 third which may give you a value of 5.6 femtofarad. So, we can calculate the C mu value at a given bias. Please remember these values have to be calculated for a given DC biases. Similarly, you can calculate the collector capacitance with the substrate which is essentially 20 femtofarad divided by 1 plus 5 volt the voltage given to you upon 0.65 which is built in voltage for collector sub substrate jun uh, junction one third this gives you a value of 10.5 femtofarads and if I calculate therefore the major small signal parameter for me then it is QIC by KT 10 to power minus 3 divided by 26 millivolts this is 38 milliamps per volt okay 38 milliamps per volt uh, one can always say it is millisiemens as well but this is a common practice in analog circuit not to use the unit of Siemens. Okay, modes or whatever it is. The reason is, as I say, we always have values which is current by current, current by voltage, voltage by current, voltage by voltage. So we keep specifying the actual units of numerator and denominator. V by V, V by I, I by V, I by I. We write exactly as the units we see on the denominator and numerator. Is that clear? That's the terminology. If you use millisiemens word or milliohms, nothing wrong. The modes is perfectly justified. But as a convention, that is what we use. So, I can also calculate the base emitter CBE, which is very important GM times tau B. GM is given to you, tau B is given to you. So, it is 0.38 uh, picofarad. Please remember this value is so high. Point. So, if some capacitance is larger, is it across the base emitter junction, is it more important or it is not more important? Smaller capacitance are important or larger capacitance are important. Please think of it. 1 upon j omega c is the resistance offered or impedance offered across. If c is much higher, then it will actually shunt the input voltage or is that correct? So, please remember these values may decide at the end how much real signal is entering the base before actually the amplification can be seen. So, these values are not trivial, but it also depends on the omega term. If omega is larger or omega is smaller, these impedance may change. So, sometimes it may be dominant, sometimes they may not be dominant and that is exactly what we are trying to say. That means, the response of an amplifier or a circuit is also a function of frequency. Is that correct? And that is most important for us. What is the frequency response? This is all that we are doing is for to finally get a frequency response. Okay. 
we can calculate therefore the net C pi as C B E plus C J E which is 0.38 puff just we calculated 20 pic femtofarad is 0 0.0 picofarad so it is roughly 0.4 puff uh, is the C pi value is that correct C pi is 0.4 puff by similar expressions which we have already told you it is R pi which is beta 0 by gm and that beta 0 is 100 gm is 38 milliamp per volt so it is around 26 kilo ohm which is not a very small value please remember R pi is 26 kilo ohms is it good or bad is do you believe the resistance across base emitter should be higher or lower if R pi across is very low what will it do it will short circuit every input signal okay so ideally input impedance should be infinite it should allow all the input voltage to go okay but how much is that therefore will reduce R pi upon R pi plus other resistances will decide how much is actual VB made available to you is that clear to you so that is most important what values you are operating please remember R pi has something to do with beta as well as gm which is a function of collector current and collector current is our biasing current is that correct so bias is also going to decide my r pi bias is also going to decide my gm and bias to some extent also decide beta 0 but normally it is cj constant we can calculate r mu which is typically 10 times beta 0 r 0 which is 20 mega ohm so you can see this value you can always neglect as far as shunting across C mu is concerned but if you keep it and solve nothing goes wrong numerically automatically that value will take care of itself is that correct so ideally you need not neglect terms but as an engineering you must remember which terms should be used and which one should not be used why we want to because we are the smartest guys and we like to do calculations maybe by what we call back of the envelope what is this word I use even a small paper I should be able to tell you roughly how much is this okay to do this you must guess correctly which values I can neglect so smallest I can get I say okay this is the value okay because this is the first guess I must do when I actually implement the circuit on a board or in a chip design when I do a actual silicon chip implementation so this first evaluations can be done by just finding okay this is too large this is a, so this at frequency this I can neglect oh so gain is so much this will fall at this these values are your first guesses in all designs and all analysis therefore you must roughly know these are values because when you finally evaluate this should not be far away from these values this is your check okay how much is that okay 10 megahertz gain will fall okay now you got 100 megahertz in your actual cal something you made a mistake definitely is that clear so first evaluation should be what we call back up the envelope calculation envelope being very small we can be able to do right calculations there this is engineering how much to do when is very crucial in designs okay. I am uh, making this word design and design again the reason is at the end of the day you are not going to do analysis in your career you will have to design something for others okay if you are paid for it okay obviously you will be paid for it and since you are as an engineer you will be designing to do a good design you must do good analysis first because you should know what implements when I implement what influences what okay and therefore my design has direct connection to what the analysis I have learned through. so this course will strictly follow more analysis but why are we doing this analysis because at the end if I have to design I must know all of it beforehand okay that is the way we think we should do one of the major parameters which uh, all of you are last time I told all of you is the figure of merit of a BGT hmm. uh, it is also called FT sometimes it is called omega T what is omega T 2 pi FT is omega okay F omega T so if you some books say omega T it is same as FT because 2 pi is a fixed number 6.3 uh, this uh, 2 8 and that is good enough okay. So normally either omega T or FT is the value specified to you if it is frequency or it is in radians depends on what value people specify. Now what is the definition for it is defined as 
it is the common emitter current gain when it falls to unity is that point clear ft means i am varying the frequency for an um, this kind of a circuit okay and i want to find at what value the beta which is collector current by the base current falls to what value unity what why why we want to uh, find this value what does that why it is called figure of merit beyond this ft what will happen ic by ib will be less than 1 so no gain why are we doing an amplifier which has no gain okay so that is the maximum frequency of operation which you can use in a circuit but you should not use ft really you should typically use 1 by 10 of ft in your uh, analysis uh, in your designs because ft is the point at which gain has fallen to 1 so that limit I want to know where is the gain going to 1 and beyond that I will not actually operate any time and that is why it is called figure of merit okay. How do I calculate this or how do I evaluate? I already said it is going to be common emitter current gain when false to unity. So I say okay I short circuit the output what does that mean? I make V0 0 but the current is not 0 please see collector current is still flowing in a circuit which I declared I0 my input current is I I which is nothing but the base current both are AC currents both are AC current DC biasing is taken care okay then beta j omega is defined as I0 by I I IC by IB and that is a function of frequencies input signal is varying with frequency current is function of I am actually increasing the frequency and let us see where at what frequency this term beta j omega becomes unity and that frequency will define as ft okay we want unity current gain if I have a resistance there there are two parts of the currents that means the actual transistor current is now shared between the resistance and the collector current the collector external current will be then divided by the resistance V by R plus GM times that. I am interested in FT of transistor not the circuit. So I want to remove that resistor from there. Is that correct? That means I must put only currents going at the output which will as if V0 is short. By of course we will come back to it. If you write a small signal equivalent to get I by something you will have to make the other term equal to 0 network analysis a1 b1 plus something to make other term 0 only then you can get this ratio is that we will do that analysis again in real life okay. this is just to give you the measurement. So this is equivalent circuit is that clear this is my equivalent circuit this is my ii r by actually I may right now neglect rbb dash also I may neglect r mu I may neglect uh, leave this I res also I neglected actually you can forget about rc as well if you wish. By making output shorting I made V0 0 but the I0 is flowing inside and how much is I0 therefore at the, this node node 2 GMBB is that correct now something I made a mischief in this my assumption is not much current is flowing across C mu okay but that is an assumption which is not very bad as of now okay we will show you later it may not be as good an assumption okay. So I0 is GM times VB this is the current only current flowing in this circuit okay because V0 is 0 so no current in R0 is that correct no current in R0 no current here so only this current source is same as the collector current. If you see the input current II you can say VB times J omega C pi is one current here where one current is flowing here and one current is flowing here is that okay last people the ir current is divided into two arms one through c pi other through r pi again assumption is very little current is flowing in c mu okay if that is to be taken care little complications will arise more accuracy can be built but as an engineering that is going to happen so if i write ir is equal to vb j omega c pi plus vb j omega c mu okay uh, this this is R pi I made a mistake plus V B E by R pi 
sorry. And if I collect I0 by II from these two node equations, I can get I0 by II is gm r pi upon 1 plus r pi times c pi plus c mu into g omega. Is that term clear? I got II, I got I0 and then took the ratio of I0 by II and that what is the way I define that? Output current which is collector current, II is the base current, the ratio is beta since both currents are functions of frequency, so is the beta is a function of frequency. So I, I have a beta j omega is gmr by, are you, if you are familiar with Laplace transforms, I hope so. We may start using s instead of j omega, but I thought initially maybe I will show you, later maybe we will not use j omega term, we start using s normally as every one of us have been familiar with, okay, just for a few days we may continue j omega then we will never use j omega term and maybe at the end we need we will put s is equal to j omega. Okay. So yes. The current going through this is the conductance multiplied by voltage gv. This is gv this current okay I have taken care in this current also now in this case. All that I said no current on this side but this current I have taken. So there are three currents flowing here, one through this. Please remember what is voltage here? 0, V0 I assume 0. So I can find this current which is VB times J omega C mu, this current because this voltage is going to 0. So I calculate this current, I calculate this current, I calculate this current. Is that okay? Oh, so that is what I already said RC as far as since there is no other term there is a RC I said drop right now that is what I said you know that is what I started neglect RBB dash, neglect RES, neglect RC these are parasitics right now we are not worried about okay. So this I0 by II is that last people is it clear to you how did what did I do I calculate currents here I calculate current here and took the ratio of the and that ratio we know is beta j omega okay is that okay so we move further and we say if i do this so okay maybe we can keep it here so now to make this beta j omega equal to 1 what is the condition it will get to me let's put at okay maybe we'll put a next slide at omega equal to omega t we say beta j omega is 1. Now we can say in normal cases since omega t is very high much higher frequencies in numerical numbers is this term is stronger than 1 if I take square of this plus 1 square or under root of this magnitude wise this term will start Please remember r pi c pi c mu into omega square plus 1 square under root of the when I do magnitude for this, this one is much smaller compared to this number and if I do so then I write r pi c pi plus c mu omega t is gmr pi then omega t is gm r pi divided by if you wish to keep 1 I have no objection if you wish you can keep this 1 and then write 1 further it does not matter but then there is a 1 upon term comes so right now I do not want to complicate so I will just write r pi c pi plus c mu okay uh, what is gm r pi? What is GMR pi? Beta 0. What is beta 0 by R pi? GM. Oh, pile away kar sakte se, kaat ke. <laughs> you are right. So, omega t is what gm upon c pi 
and C mu. What is Gm? Kt by Q. Sorry, I am very sorry. Qic by Kt divided by C pi. So, are you now getting a point that when I c becomes constant, what is the uh, from where I fix my I c? I just showed you biasing. If I fix my bias, I fix my I c, capital I c. If I fix my I c, I may fix my c pi, c mu, and g m together. All three of them are fixed by me. So, this omega t then becomes the figure of merit. Is that correct? What is the definition I said for it? Whenever beta falls to 1, beta j omega falls to 1, that is the frequency at which transistor will no more give you current gains. And if there is no current gain, there is no question of i times z r output if you put, the voltage will be less than input voltage. So, even there will not be any voltage gains. So, if I am not getting an amplifier, I am not getting an amplifier and any amplification, then why do I do it? Okay. Of course, this statement we may qualify later. It is not really necessary that the amplifier should have a gain less than, should not have gain less than 1. We may not call that, we will say minus so many dBs. Okay. It does not matter for me if the gain is less than 1 in some cases. We will show you why we say so. It is very relevant for us. As of now, we say amplifier should have gain larger than 1. Then we will call amplification. Is that correct? So, omega t is therefore what it is called figure of merit. And this is technology constraint because please remember the values of C pi, C mu are decided by the doping in base emitter junctions and base collector junction, the lifetimes there I assume, the base transit time I assume, except the capital IC part which is external to me, the rest parameters are internal to a transistor. So, they decide what Gm by C I am going to get. This normally in one word they say Gm by C. E in. Okay. So, what G m by C in now you are understood what did I say so why it is called figure of merit because it decides the maximum frequency of operation calling am amplifier circuit as an amplifier is that clear. Can you get me a unity gain amplifier unity gain is not this oh sorry when the beta becomes starts falling. So, what is this expression which I just showed you this expression if I plot on a frequency scale what do what will you like to see beta times omega if I plot. What will happen you start looking at this expressions. If omega is much smaller is that correct if omega is much smaller this term will be smaller than 1 because C pi C mu are femtofarads and something like that. R pi is kilo ohms only. Is that correct? So, at higher frequency this term will start dominating, but for lower frequency 1 will start dominating. So, how much is the gain at very low frequencies? Gm R pi which is beta 0. So, at low frequencies gain roughly is beta 0. And as you start increasing the frequency, what will happen? The denominator terms will become higher and higher and beta will start becoming lower and it will fall, it will start falling in a log scale if you plot, this will start falling. At this point, actually it will go by asymptote, but this frequency, when the beta falls by 3 dB or 1 upon root 2 of this beta beta 0 by root 2 3 dB down okay this value is called beta sorry omega beta what is this value called omega beta this frequency how do i calculate from here you can calculate find the 3 dB means 1 upon root 2 put this is equal to root 2 and whatever value you will get is called omega beta which is beta 0 by root 2 is that correct beta 0 by root 2. This omega beta what is the significance of omega beta and this value omega t how can they be related anyone? 
सोचो अभी क्या रिलेशन होगा इसमें ओके यू डू दिस एंड फाइंड दिस ओमेगा बीटा टाइम्स बीटा जीरो इज एसेंशियली ओमेगा टी इज दैट करेक्ट एसेंशियली ओमेगा टी so what is the omega beta value you can immediately this is of course not exact like this so how do i calculate omega beta otherwise i calculate omega t which is my gm by 2, 2 pi cn and then just divide by beta 0 and i get my omega beta and what is this value i should use for anyone what is the beta why i am interested in omega beta because it is here up to this frequency your amplifier has a reasonable gains available is that correct if you go beyond omega of this beta will start falling it still gain but it will start falling is that clear at omega t no further gains okay so now can you say that not even 10 times how much i should have a omega beta roughly will be beta will be in 100 or 200 so omega beta will be 100 or 200 of omega t omega t may be let's say 100 mega uh, 1 gigahertz or something or 10 gigahertz 100 or 200 times less of that will be the operating frequency is that correct what is omega beta called the maximum operating frequency is omega beta for us is that correct please remember i can certainly go beyond omega beta as well till up to what omega t but i am assuming and i know when i am designing that my beta is falling but i am taking care by other parameters the lift up the gains okay by gm thoda bada dunga main kuch aur karunga but i know i have some advantage of increasing the frequency but beyond omega t of course i'll not use it but preferably i'll only use my transistor in range from 0 to omega this is called my operating frequency maximum operating frequency that's why this number is known must be known to us i will evaluate omega t divide by my beta zero value and say okay this is the uppermost frequency i'll use for you okay is that clear to you therefore this is how the analog circuit bipolar circuits actually gets limited both on frequencies as well as gains because if you want to make gain larger or gm larger what should i increase gm i want larger and larger to get larger gains what should i increase ic what is the problem if i increase ic okay you are one is worst case that ic may be so high that device saturates let's say it doesn't even now then what will it for increase something else uh yeah to some extent yes but no no there is a major worry starts if the collector current or the current in the circuit start rising no device v times i what is it power so the i showed you yesterday first slide power is my major worry so power dissipation will start enhancing and once power dissipation increases what increases temperature temperature increases all my parameters of device are a function of t okay so they keep changing beta changes r pi everything will change with temperature and now as they change and you will find very interesting some of the parameters have positive coefficients so they may further boost ic may further boost t further boost ic so what will happen it may actually burn or what we call thermal run away device may actually burn okay is that clear so even if what she said is correct first a device may enter saturation but let's say it is at the edge it doesn't enter even then your circuit may actually fail at then is that clear this is the reason why we say there are limitations of everything which we work on is that clear otherwise on a normal board many things can be tried what do we do like you open any uh, computer or any other system there is a huge fan on the back side of the system okay so it keeps cooling so any desktop system i can keep a good coolant uh, cooling system and i will never allow temperature to rise but on a chip which is our major worry when i actually make a chip there is no fan in because this is a package inside there is no fan inside okay so this chip will burn irrespective of what you do 
is that clear to you and therefore in designs we must worry about the limitations and limitations come from the theory of the transistors which we are used is that correct so why all that uh, so far we are doing to show you so we wanted to convince you that why we are getting limited otherwise you know why not work everywhere whatever value i substitute numerically something will come okay but it may not be useful as far as circuit circuits so this as a engineer we must know where we are bounds uh, maths padha hai na lower bound upper bound we must work within the bounds okay let's do something more okay the major device of course as i say why i keep teaching bipolar because it to every book will start with bipolar so i don't want to take you away immediately from that but the first amplifier which we are going to design will not be bipolar we'll first do mos design and then say okay equivalent bipolar kya karta hai ha okay okay so now with the with the next technology of interest or next device of interest which is based on mosfet here is a n channel mosfet or maybe if uh, there are four possible mosfet we may use uh, one is n mos enhancement mode please see a symbol this is a cross section of n channel enhancement mode transistor how many terminal mosfets have four please remember mosfet is a four terminal device actually so is the bipolar i show you substrate is the four there also in circuits actual terminals are four but the normally substrates are grounded with the other grounds and therefore you see three in bi, uh, bipolar transistor but in mos you will always have four terminal of course you can connect base bus this substrate as well as source common then it will also become three terminal please i have a figures first is n channel enhancement mode transistor and mos the second is n channel depletion mode mosfet and complementary to them is p channel enhancement mode and p channel depletion modes thoda symbol this has just shown you to you whatever symbols i am going to use in my course i just thought i should show you my circuit symbols in the case of enhancement mode n channel the base arrow is inside base arrow is inside this is the symbol for n mos enhancement mode is that okay n channel enhancement mode the substrate terminal arrow gets inside okay that's my symbol by contrast this is is a complementary p channel transistors the arrow is opposite coming out towards substrate b is called bulk bulk or substrate b is called bulk other name is also substrate so the arrow in p channel is out arrow in n channel is in there are three terminals otherwise gate drain and source for each of them and fourth is the bulk now what is depletion transistor you are have, have they discussed okay if the channel exist pre exist before the gate voltage is applied then there is already a current flowing between source and drain independent of gate voltage essentially what we are saying is the following or maybe i have a figure i don't have to if you are drawn this is standard you can see in any book including the book which i happen to know co author for that okay if you don't buy your choice any of the book you buy is fine if you use library books fantastic absolutely no problems so if i plot uh, okay n channel uh, n mos this is the third one is a normal n mos enhancement mode i am drawing what is called as what characteristic is this ids bgs ids is at what point ah very good someone has said transfer drain source current is the output current vgs at the input therefore it's called input to output transfer 
okay so it is transfer characteristics you can see at 0 bias VGS no current as I start increasing VGS channel will start appearing and at certain voltage we call turn on voltage or threshold voltage current will start rising sufficiently sufficient electrons will be made available in n channel there okay, P substrate n channel. This voltage is called threshold voltage where current starts substantially this higher. N channel negative Vt has some advantage this is called depletion transistors. What is it trying to show you in depletion? Even at 0 VGS there is a current flowing and to shut it off I will have to apply negative Vt negative VGS equal to a Vt value which will make this electrons which were sitting there must deplete they must go away and that is called negative threshold voltage minus Vt and the upper two are just the complementary of the only see that signs for P channel are minus IDS minus VDS minus everything. I could have shown on the fourth quadrant but that is shown essentially on the fourth quadrant okay. These are two are fourth quadrant these two are the first quadrants is that okay these first two are on the fourth quadrant second two are on the first quadrant curves. What is the Vt value we said? We say in a transistor whenever inversion channel comes we say that voltage of VGS we define as turn on voltage or a threshold voltage turn on only circuit people call as a device we always call threshold voltage okay. So this threshold voltage by theory which we will not use now but just to show you for both n channel p channel common formula has been specified phi m s what is phi m s work function difference between metal uh, gate as well as the semiconductor 2 phi f what is phi f Fermi energy kt ln k, uh, kt by q ln n a by n i or n d by n i therefore plus and minus both signs n d by n i will be minus or n a by n i will be minus Hola. यदि P channel device है ND by NI will be minus because potential above is negative and lower is positive opposite happens in both case okay. Please remember E by Q is V but a sign Q has a minus sign is that correct Q has a minus sign and therefore potential energy rise plus means potential negative energy going down means potential positive band diagrams thoda dekh kya okay this q ox is the fixed charges in the oxide normally 99.99 they would be always positive unless we do some radiation or something we force it to become lower or minus otherwise q ox term is always positive so this always is negative what is c ox value essentially capacitance of oxide is epsilon ox divided by T ox this is oxide capacitance per unit area gate area okay. and plus minus QB QB is QNAXD depletion layer charge QNAXD or QNDXD is that correct so that is plus minus is that correct QNAXD will be minus QNDXD will be plus but this sign is minus outside. So minus QNAXD will become positive because of the outer minus sign and plus QNDXD will become minus because of the minus sign. So what is it trying to show you? Vt can be known to us from the device side. I have no control once given me a transistor my Vt's are given to me. I am least bothered what is 5ms, what are fixed charges, why they are operating, why band diagram goes like this or goes like this held to them. So we will now onwards may not use these expressions but just to give an idea that from where they were appearing. Okay. Now typical output characteristics of a bipolar uh, mass transistor is of this IDS versus VDS at different VGS values are plotted here. Whenever VGS is less than VT there is no inversion channel but there is a small current what is it because of? VGS is less than VT so no inversion channel firstly this statement itself is not correct why do I say 
because the definition of inversion was given when the bend, band bending is equal to 2 times the 5, but between 5 and 2 5 the inversion was existing. So one reason was, but assuming it even went to 5, there is still current going on. From where? If you see the device quickly and that is very in the circuits also now, these are 2 diodes. Even if gate is not controlling any charge here, these two diodes are reverse bias diodes and reverse bias diode will constitute reverse bias currents. So this is the leakage current, junction leakage current which is independent of what oxide does or does not do. Is that clear to you? These are diode reverse bias currents. So leakage currents are always present independent of. Now what is the first slides I show you? that is becoming now major worry for us. Since we are scaling, 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 reducing everything, the currents in this are increasing. This saturation currents are increasing enormously because the dopings I am using. Since these currents are increasing and on currents I cannot increase because size will increase and I am reducing the size. So what is happening? I told you one bad thing about or good thing for you that the recent mobiles people say keep it on because the off current is much larger than the off current, on current. So on rakhoge to battery come drain hogi, off karte standby mein drain ho jayegi. So baat karo, okay, okay. So this region which in a digital we use very often, what is this region? VGS less than VT or 0 roughly, off state of the transistor, okay. We say 0 current but it is not 0, it is some finite small current. Then we say if I start increasing VGS further beyond VT, inversion channel will exist and current for given VGS will start each as one characteristic. Now this essentially means if I increase VGS, I am going to increase IDS. But so is if you see at this region at least, in this region, those slopes are not very much, but there is a finite slope that if I increase VDS, current still increases marginally. But if you see this region, for every VGS, if I increase VDS, current increases linearly, roughly linearly. So what is this region called? Linear region of a mass transistor. What is this region called in transistor? because characteristics roughly looks to be saturated, this is called saturated region. These names are opposite in the case of bipolar. In the case of bipolar, this region we called as saturated because there both junctions became forward biased, okay. The maximum collector current was made available. So there this region we called saturated, in the MOS we call this region as saturated. Is that clear? Slight definition. Why this definition came? The first difference you should realize between bipolar transistor and a MOS transistor. What is the input of a MOS transistor we say all the time? VGS that is voltage driven. What is the input in the case of bipolar? Current input, base current. So it is a current driven circuit I0 by I, II. So the first worries are in the case of bipolar, obviously you will find the input impedance will be lower. Is that correct? Because there is a current flowing. So V by I, since I will be larger, so resistance at the input will be always smaller QIB by KT, which is HIB as we call or KT by QIB. Whereas what do we really want? Larger input resistance. Can you tell me why I am saying so from the circuit point of view? I have one circuit here, circuit 1 circuit 1 and I am connecting this to circuit 2. Now it has some input impedance and it has some output impedance. Is these two value has something to play a game? If this value is infinite, let us say Rn, then this device will not be loaded or this will not share currents from here. Otherwise what will happen? These two trans resistors will parallel and this value will start influencing the output of the first stage itself. 
if this resistance is finite in uh, 0 or small then these two will become smaller and V0 will be then function of second circuit which no designer will like because I do not know what where I am going to connect. So, how do I decide for the first block what I am going to connect next. So, ideally my R inch should be infinite. I also want my R to be as small as possible if it is a series resistance because I do not want large currents to flow there ok. Now, if that is so happen the decision is how to control R O and R inch. MOSFET has the biggest advantage. What is this RN? You see a MOS transistor. What is between this, between gate and transistor bulb? Oxide, large resistance, large resistance. Is that correct? Mega ohms, hundreds of mega ohms, which means its input impedance is extremely high. So, MOSFET circuits are better because they can be directly connected. Nahi to bipolar mein kya karna padega? इसके बीच में दोनों के बीच में एक ब्लॉक डालना पड़ेगा उसको क्या बोलते हैं बफर आई हैव टू मैच रेजिस्टेंस ऑन दिस साइड एंड आल्सो रेजिस्टेंस इसको ऐसा बोलते हैं कि इफ यू हैव वन ह्यूज डब्ल्यू जो जो को बॉक्स वर्ल्ड बॉक्स क्या वो फाइट वाले करते हैं इफ देयर इज अ ह्यूज रेसलर एंड अ स्मॉलर रेसलर दे कैन नॉट फाइट सो एक बीच में रेफरी खड़ा रहता है ये इसको मानते हैं वो उसको मानते हैं बट दे बोथ आर सेव so, buffer is a very important circuit in all bipolar circuit. It is not that important, I am not saying that not important, that important in the case of MOS transistor. Not that it is not required, not that we will never use buffer, we will require any time. But in general, what is the advantage of bipolar over MOS and what is the disadvantage of that? Bipolars have larger GM. Why? QIC by KT, ICs are always larger than IDS for given voltages. Collector currents will be larger compared to the drain currents. Is that correct? What does that mean? For same voltage operations, GM will be larger for bipolars and GM will be smaller for MOS transistors. So, what will be the voltage gain for the same, same currents and same voltages? Bipolars will give you higher gains than MOSFETs. What is the disadvantage is giving? It is consuming larger power, its input impedance is low, is that correct? Whereas in the case of MOSFET, its input impedance is very large and closer to infinites, and currents being smaller, what is it going to consume power? Much lower power, is that correct? So, you must know when to use bipolar and when. So, larger GM ka ek or kya advantage hoga? Omega badega ki kam hoga. Beta higher hai to fall bhi long hoga to omega T bhi higher hoga. So, higher bandwidth can also be attained by bipolars compared to MOS. I do not say they are, MOS does not is not coming closer to bipolar. But intrinsically one sees bipolar have a larger power, larger bandwidth and larger gains ok. Whereas, mass transistors have larger lower bandwidth, lower gains and lower power ok. But then we will continue to use everything lower these days because power is our major criteria everywhere ok. Nahi toh aapka mobile, laptops, ye chote chote handheld system hai, they will start draining power in next seconds ok. Is that clear? So, we are looking for low power. So, that is why I say MOS transistors are preferred uh, blocks compared to this. Of course, this is not only reason we were looking for digital which is much better in the case, in case of MOS than in bipolar and therefore, we will prefer MOSFETs as a universal device, is that clear, universal device. But if I want specific circuits which has a higher bandwidth, higher gain, then I will look for Bipolars, I will look for bipolars and therefore, bipolar circuits though only 6 percent of the world semiconductor IC market has only 6 percent bipolars, 94 percent and I am told now soon it may be 98 percent will be MOS and only 2 percent will bipolar. So, maybe after a few years I may not be teaching, but we will not teach bipolar at all, okay. Okay. 
So having told you that this is our mass characteristics, we must operate where in this region which is our saturation region, what is the saturation region we are saying and what will happen in linear mode? We will say in a linear mode VDS has direct relationship with IDS, so it is a resistive circuit. I would now prefer that this current may remain roughly constant for given VG, VDS or varying VDS only should change with VGS. What does that mean? External voltages should not influence too much of the output current, only the input should change okay, and output should be seen. So I will prefer to work only in this. If I extrapolate these which unfortunately this length is not good enough for me. If I extrapolate these as I did in bipolar where they will meet at a point which is not really early voltage in stricter sense. What do you mean by stricter sense? Because this early effect is not seen in MOSFET really is that correct? But we say as if they are same so we say VA which is early voltage for the case of MOSFET also. By same logic what will be the R0 for MOS transistor? VA by IDS okay, will be the R0. So given the biasing IDS, given the early voltage, I know my output resistance. Is that correct? VA by IDS. Please remember at this point, for example, if I bias, VA plus this much I must add. But I do not add. Why I said you? Because VDD will be how much? 3 volt, 1.5 volt, 1.8 volts. How much will be this? 100 volts, 50 volts. So 50 plus 1.5 divided by so much by so much. 50 by this and 51 by this will not give you much a difference and therefore we say we normally do not write this plus this divided by this. We just write VA by IDS. In reality, this must be added. Okay, This must be added. But numerically 100 may 1 volt add kia na kia divided by same number will not matter. Okay, you have done this theory. I will just give the expression for you and then for you. When the transistor is in linear mode, what do you mean by linear mode? Just now I show you this mode. What is the mean? What do you mean by linear mode in transistor? When the channel exists between source and drain throughout. Okay, okay, some symbols may be quickly seen there. Sorry. I think we just repeat between source and drain we have a channel length L. The third dimension there is no duster here but okay maybe this. You can see this is your source, this is your drain, this is your channel length but this is three dimensional device. This is your width okay. So this width is shown on the third dimensions. My definitions is I always have this axis X, Y. Okay, this is how I define. So along the z axis I have the width, along the y axis I have the length and I have the depths along x axis. This is how we define in our device theory. So I have a fixed width of the device, fixed channel length of the device, then this oxide thickness T ox is also fixed by the process people. So capacitance of this is also fixed epsilon ox pi T ox. What is K ox? Dielectric constant of oxide is how much? Silicon guy 12, 3.9 okay or it, if you are numerically 4 kar sakte, but 3.9 okay. What is epsilon 0 value? 8 point A good very good 8.854 10 to the power minus 14 farad per second. Please remember another thing, of course, this course will not require in device if I am teaching, I insist that you use CGA system and not MK systems because there is huge problems in microns conversion to uh, meters to down. So here of course use any limits. Okay. So channel length, channel width, oxide capacitance, these are the specific given by transistor people. I do not care what the values they specify. Once given to me, I will use this. So I derived this expression by a simple theory mu C ox 
W by L VGS minus VT. What is VGS? Okay, let me show again. If I apply gate voltage with reference to source which is grounded, with reference to V which is grounded, and I apply VDS at the drain, this is VDS across Y, VGS is across X axis. Is that field effect clear to you? Field effect is clear to you. VGS is along X direction, it is creating an electric field along this direction current is along this direction. The current transport on a lateral plane is governed by field across or orthogonal to it and therefore it was called field effect or e, the e, e, e x field hai, which is controlling the IDS along the lateral line that is why it was named field effect is that correct. So, since this is going to control I see mu is the mobility of the carriers. So, should I use n channel device or a p channel device? n channel device because mu n is much larger than mu p. How much is larger? How much is this mu n channel or p channel? Can you tell me? No, that ratio is okay, but uh, how much is mu n in the MOS transistors and how much is mu p? The best of mu n you can get in a MOS transistor is 600 centimeter square per volt second. How much? Mu n is the best of the value you can get 600 centimeter square volt second. Okay. And mu p, as he said, is not even best of it is 200 centimeter square volt second. So, what does that mean? Why this is not 1350 or 1300 and this is not 500? The electron mobility is essentially in 1300 or 1350, sometimes even 1500 possible, whereas whole mobility in silicon is just 500. Okay. Why this number is so small? It is called surface mobility. There is an oxide surface sitting on the top, there is a lot of recombination going on there. Okay, so, these mobilities are much smaller. So, these numbers should not be used at 1300 and 500 as in the case of bipolar because there is a bulk transport here, here it is surface transport. Okay. Please look at these numbers carefully. So, can you think this value PGS minus VT, what is it essentially tells? If PGS exceeds VT, then only inversion starts, is that correct? So, this value in circuits we define this value VGS minus VT is called over voltage. What is it called? Over voltage, VOV. Okay. This is very important. Some books, I do not know any other book, may be called V axis. Is that correct? Why it is called excess or over? Over VT when you go VGS, only then current is available to you and therefore, it is called over voltage or excess voltage. Now, in the linear mode, please remember the condition which we have applied essentially is VGS minus VT is greater than VGS. Is that correct? Why this condition is valid? Because at the drain end, VGS, please look at the drain end voltage this is VGS, this is VDS. So, what is the difference at the drain end of the difference in this voltage? VGS minus VDS. If I want inversion to appear at the edge, what should be this greater than VT? Which means VGS minus VT should be greater than VDS. So, for inversion channel to go till drain, VGS minus VT must exceed VDS. So, that is the point where then we say it is a linear because if VDS is smaller, this term can be neglected. So, I get IDS proportional to VDS. This is constant, VOV is constant, IDS is proportional to VDS. Therefore, it is called linear mode of operation since VDS is smaller than VGS minus. But as you come closer, this linear relationship is not linear, it starts bending partly because square term starts coming into picture. 
However, if the condition is such that Vgs minus Vt is less than Vds, there will not be any channel at the drain end and larger the Vds, first the channel may not exist here when Vgs minus Vt is equal to Vds, Vgs minus Vt is equal to Vds, no channel here, okay. If Vgs minus Vt is still smaller than Vds, even here it will be 0 less than Vt. Here, so channel will become saturated or pinch off at and the pinch off point will start shifting towards source as VDA starts increasing. Is that correct? That means the effective channel length is not L, but it is something L minus the depletion layer, which is a function of this doping and this bias. How much is VDS will decide the depletion larger the depletion, larger will be depletion layer and smaller will be L effective. What is the importance of this word I am saying? If you see this expression, if L becomes L effective and smaller, then what does that mean? Ideas will increase or decrease? Increase because L is decreasing, L effective in decreasing means I increasing. That is exactly what you saw in the characteristics slope. If VDA starts increasing, the depletion layer will start enhancing, L dash will become smaller and there will be a increase of current with VDS as well. Is that clear to you? Is that clear to you? That is why this slope is appearing for you, okay. Therefore, this slope is appearing for you. So, first we said in the saturation, normally we say it should be independent of VDS. So, normal currents, what do we write? This should have been our normal current. Sorry, if I would have been, uh, if a ideal saturation would have existed, I say IDS will be half mu C ox W by L VGS minus VT square. Okay, such good as such. But now, just now I said that if VDS increases, L effective actually changes. Okay, and therefore that effect can be taken care by additional term which is 1 plus lambda VDS which is lambda is a saturation factor, lambda is saturation factor and it is defined by in actual this lambda dash by L. What does this also means? Larger the channel length, lambda will be higher or smaller? This is a parameter, this is technology parameter which is fixed for a given transistor. So, larger the channel length, smaller is lambda. Smaller is lambda here is good or bad? You look at it. If lambda is smaller, this will be independent of VDS. Is that correct? What does mean R0 is how much? If what is R0? Delta IDS by delta VDS. If they does not change with VDS, R0 is infinite ideal ideal is that correct. So, I would prefer channel lengths to be higher and oh, why small? higher and higher such that lambda is smaller such that lambda VDS term become smaller. But this means channel length larger if I do what will happen to actual IDS value will decrease. So, is we will see GM will also decrease. So, one advantage I got Please remember what I am saying, GM decreases if I increase channel length. However, if I define R0 which is nothing but related to lambda, so is that correct? So, what is R0 is higher when lambda is smaller which means channel length is higher. Larger channel